Live from San Francisco, it's The Q. Covering Informatica World 2017. Brought to you by Informatica. Welcome back to Informatica World 2017. I'm Peter Burris, and once again, theCUBE is broadcasting morning to night, two days in a row, to bring you the signal from the noise at this very, very important conference. There's a lot going on here as we talk about the increasing role that data is playing in the world. Now, to get a user perspective, and not just any user perspective, a leading user perspective on some of these issues, we've asked Mel Kirk to come on board. Mel, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, sir. Glad to be here. Mel is the Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer for Rider Systems. For those of you who don't know Rider, it's a trucking company, a uh, trucking and leasing company. Absolutely. And uh, my background is I used to actually do a lot of research around transportation related things. And, okay. and I always found the ability to use queuing theory uh. in both technology and in transportation yes. to be very fascinating. Yes. So again, well, uh, Mel, uh, welcome here, but tell us a little bit about uh, what you're here at Informatica World for and, and what's your interest in all this? You know, it's interesting. This, this was one of the conferences that I set out this year that I wanted to come to because I wanted to learn more about um, where Informatica is going in terms of leveraging data. Um, the transportation company, we, we generate a lot of data. We have three business units. We have a fleet management company uh, 3PL, traditional transportation or supply chain company, and a dedicated transportation company. All three of those businesses generate a lot of data, and uh, we're on a journey to try to figure out how what's the best way of using that data to improve business outcomes. So that's what I'm here for uh, this week is to learn more about the tools that are here, the the applications that are here that we can use to do just that. So one of the things that I'm fascinated uh, often the new branding of Informatica, which okay. I, we think is good. Enterprise, cloud, data management, leader. Yep. Yep. We know what enterprise is, yep. we know what cloud is, we know what leader is. One of the dynamics is what is the new data management? We've talked to a couple of people about it. From your perspective, all this data coming in, what is the new data management function at Rider, or the new requirements and capabilities? I think the biggest thing for us from a data management standpoint is, is, is mastering our data. Uh, like I said, we, we generate a lot of data. We've got uh, two really important domains in which that data revolves around. It's the customer and it's the vehicle. And so our objective this year is to master both the customer and the vehicle, uh, the information around those, so that our, our marketing team can create better solutions by understanding all of the ways that a particular customer may interact with our, with our business. It's also, uh, our operating team is leveraging that same data to win at the local level on a day-to-day -day basis. When a, when a driver comes to one of our facilities and he wants work done on his truck, our account people, or our service people at that location will be able to pull up specific information about that customer and perform the work that they need based on the contract they have with us. That's a win for, for the customer and a win for our local team. So key, handle the customers, handle the crucial assets. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a general trend in the industry. As you look across both the conversations that you're having here in informatical world, but also beyond, where mm -hmm. do you think the industry is going from a trend standpoint with some of these questions around data? I think we're all on a journey to try to figure out the best ways to leverage the data. Treat, treat, treat data as an enterprise asset, right? A real enterprise asset that may have more value to it than some of, the, some, of the, some of the physical assets that sit in our business. And as I've talked to people in the, during the week here, um, it's really about that journey of trying to figure out how do, you, how do you get better value out of the investment that you make in understanding, cleansing, liberating your data. And for us, again, that's creating products, new products from the data that we have, and it's improving uh, productivity and efficiency in our operations with that data. So you must be excited about some of the new capabilities Informatica is announcing yes. about being able to discover, yeah. you know, inventory, and then use metadata in new and different ways. What, what do you think about some of the metadata issues that Informatica is talking about here? Yeah, I, I think uh, the, the you know both metadata and cloud for for me is very important. The metadata is uh, is important because. Again, we've got multiple business units, right, that are operating with elements of data that are dis, dis, uh, that, that are not associated across the uh, across the enterprise, 
And so, um, you know, getting, getting more deliberate about understanding the data at the metadata level will help us as we, as we try to bridge everything together across our enterprise. The cloud's important because more and more of our customers are moving from a batch world to, no, to a near real time world. And what, what's happening there is we need the ability to spin up uh, operations in a very quick way, receive data in large swaths. So having burst capacity is where the cloud is going to give us. Uh, the, immediate, the immediacy of, of, uh, of capacity is important to us. So the cloud-based applications that I've seen here, um, even the, um, the uh, enterprise information catalog is important because as we go through and we cleanse and harness our data, having it in a structured, governed pattern uh, is important to us as well. So you had been in the business. You're a, mm -hmm. your XGE before you came, right, right. a couple of iterations before. Right. You're a master black belt, six spec sigma, that kind of stuff. You're an operations guy. I'm an operations guy. So as you think about going from an operations guy, and great operations guys are very focused on data, mm -hmm. into the CIO, how was that transition? <laughs> it was uh, more than what I thought. You know, it's interesting. I've, I've said that uh, as, a, as an operator, I'm not sure that I would have been, a, been effective in this role five, 10 years ago because it was a different type of role. Right. Today, I don't know how you'd not do this role, how, how you can do this type of a role, the CIO role, without having an operational background because the technology is integral to everything we do now. So, you know, where before companies uh, differentiated themselves on, you know, operational rigor and process, which is what I live in, yep. now it's about data. Now it's about data and the technology tools that can free up capacity, create productivity, and again, generate products. And so, uh, it's, this has been a great exercise for me, a great uh, learning experience for me, getting involved in technology at a time when it's moving so fast, right? Every day is a different day from a technology standpoint. And bridging that with my operating background, I think um, you know, it's been a great experiment for both me and Ryder. Well, a lot of CIOs that, uh, that have great job satisfaction right. at heart are operations people yeah. who uh, have figured out how to be operations yeah, people absolutely. as opposed to people who often, CIOs who often don't have that satisfaction right. are spending their days putting out fires and they never right. get into that groove. Right. But think about as the, as the role of the CIO changes at Ryder, but just in general, mm -hmm. how do you see yourself organizing your groups around data mm -hmm. assets? Because it used to be that the key assets were you know, the hardware right. or the network. Right. How is that catalyzing a new way of thinking about getting your talent mobilized to do what Ryder needs your function to do? You know, the big shift is away from keeping the lights on and keeping the phones working to delivering outcomes for the business. So that's that operational view, right? It's really, uh, whether it's an application development team or, or, or a talent on our, uh, employee on our infrastructure team, it's about delivering outcomes for the operating team, for the business team. And so an, an example of that is in our, um, in our fleet management business, right? We run 850 shops around the U U.S. and Canada, repair centers. And um, our core application in that business, our, our, our technicians in those shops say, Mel, if you can do one thing for us, make the application faster. That's both an application problem and an infrastructure problem, sure. right? In, in terms of trying to find the right solve. What I've been able to do, or what I've been focusing on, is translating that ask of give me more speed to the infrastructure team and the application team in a way that they understand that that, that incremental speed means better customer service, better outcomes for the business as well as our customer. That driver that comes to that repair center he or she is on the clock, right. and they want to get out as fast as they, they are. They are more of more value to their to their uh, to their to the customer when they're on the road doing their job. And that truck is typically not a cheap thing. It's not a so cheap thing. So the truck's on the clock too. Absolutely. So Absolutely. as you think about you think about the new these new disciplines and the acculturating the application team to at least in this case right. speed the infrastructure team to speed, are there any new skills or any new disciplines that you are finding need to be filled within your shop? You know, the thing that's been interesting, and I'm going to go back to my Six Sigma background, the thing that's really been interesting when I take into consideration the pace of change of technology, 
It's been change management, right? I mean, the application team can come up with the best, the absolute best solution. I'm going to add, add two, it's change management and, and the UI, the user interface is important to that journey, Absolutely. right? And so they can come up with the greatest application, it could be the best solution ever, but you've got to get people, like in our organization, it's nothing to see employees that have been with the company for 20 years, and getting them to fundamentally change how they do work, that's a challenge. And so we, what we've been focusing on is, is, is educating both the, the IT organization as well as the business team on how to drive change, especially in an organization with such a long, rich heritage. So as these changes start to manifest themselves, your relationship with the executive staff, how's that evolving? Yes, yes. So um, when I went over to, when I came over into this role, you know, I left the operating role as a peer and I came over to the IT role and, and I think they felt sorry for me because <laughs> of all of the challenges. But what's evolved is that as I've learned more about the technology and how to deploy it, I've been able to actually balance between communicating with the technology team on the needs of the operating side of the business and then translating the technical challenges to the operating team so that they've got a better sense of if we're going to launch a new product or if we're going to, to, to onboard a new account, right? There's, there is some lead time, there's some pre-thinking that needs to happen to get the technology right for you to be successful uh, when you, do, you deploy for that customer. So I think bridging the gap between the two sides of the, of the, of the company has been very important for us, especially now given, the, again, the pace of change with technology. So does Ryder have a COO? Ryder actually doesn't have a, a, a COO at the corporate level. We have a COO in our fleet management business, um, but uh, I'm playing kind of a hybrid role, I'd say. Yes. You know, kind of a, a, a CIO slash COO because I can blend the two. Excellent, and yeah. how's, that, uh, how's that going? <laughs> it's actually good. I, when I first moved into the CIO role, I was very uh, deliberate about not encroaching on the role of the operating teams, right? Even though my heritage and all of the things that I'd done in the company was around operations, I didn't want to make operating decisions from the CIO role. What I'm realizing now is the best value for, the, the best benefit for writer and the customers is for me to bring all of the skills that I have, right? Plus the, the, the talents of the team to bear on a problem for the company. So I've, uh, I've thought less about boundaries and more about delivering outcomes. And if that means I have to put a, a, you know, a little bit of an operating perspective on a technical challenge, so be it. Which is really, quite frankly, what any real great chief anything does. Yes. How do I take yes. shareholder capital and translate it to an outcome Absolutely. through my purview? Right. So, uh, Mel, let's pretend that we got five CIOs sitting here, okay. all about ready to start in the journey that you're quite a ways along. Okay. What is the one thing you want to say to them? Say, here's how you're going to get started, and here's the, the, uh, the uh, pothole that you have to look out for. You know, I think one of the most important things that I would that I would advise is is to develop, especially if you're if you're like me coming from a different purview and, and and even you know folks that have been in technology for a while, establish a board of directors, right? Your own personal board of directors. Uh, for me, that was I had to identify, you know, a couple of folks that had been in this role before that I could call and reach out to and get uh, unfiltered advice, right? It was also uh, identifying, the second one was identifying uh, a short list of vendor partners that I could go to for technical questions in their domain, plus, plus beyond their domain where I, I felt comfortable with the, the autonomy of the answer, if you good will. Good ideas. Right, good, just good ideas. No sale, just good ideas. Um, then I had to reach inside of my team and figure out who are the one or two people in the organization that I go bounce ideas across for the sake of the change management that I talked about, right? Some for technology, but also from a change management standpoint. Um, and then build uh, um, you know, a couple of key partners at the, at the leadership level within the organization, again, to help with selling the concepts and the ideas. A lot of what a CIO is going to bring to bear now is going to be 
disruptive to the way a business, a company does business today. And so they're going to need constituents or partners from, a, from, a, from the executive leadership team. Yeah, none of it happens if the CIO doesn't recognize the change management that they have to drive Absolutely. about their role within the business. Absolutely, so I use my board of directors as board of directors as a way of getting uh, smarter about the job about, uh, you know, secondly, to, to help facilitate the change that we need, and uh, three, just to bounce ideas for awesome. sanity. Fantastic. Yeah. Mel Kirk is the Senior Vice President and Chief Information Officer of Rider Systems, Inc. Uh, Mel, great conversation. Thank you very much for being here in theCUBE. Okay, thank you for the time. Once again, Peter Burris, Informatica World 2017. We'll be back with more in a moment.